When the first Fitbit Versa came out last year, I told you how well it worked as a fitness tracker in the gym and how much promise I thought it had as a smartwatch, if only Fitbit would make a few changes. Enter the Fitbit Versa 2, a sequel with a better screen, fewer buttons, and more features. But does any of that make it a better smartwatch? The reason I phrase it that way is thanks to a conversation I had at IFA 2019 in Berlin with Windows Central's Zach Bowden. Look, I know Fit is right in the brand name, but some people, like Zach and me, buy Fitbits to use mainly as smartwatches. So this video is really for them, or for folks who want to know about the smartwatch side of this wearable. Let's start by calling out the bits of this Fit that are objective great improvements. Switching the display technology to AMOLED from last year's LCD means the colors are more vibrant and black pixels are truly black. That means graphics really pop beneath the Gorilla Glass, as you can see with this Nixie Tube watch face. Somewhere under that AMOLED panel sits a more powerful processor than last year too, which matters to more than just spec geeks. It means the interface really zips along now. That's impressive because the Versa 2 also has more features, NFC for wallet payments, which work well, and Amazon Alexa. Just hold down that side button and use the built-in microphone to set reminders, ask questions, and dictate messages. In other big names, Spotify is here too, alongside Uber, Starbucks, a handful of others in the Fitbit App Store. For me, the best bit about the Versa 2 is that it improves on something the Versa 1 was already great at, battery life. Where a typical Apple or Galaxy watch needs to be charged every other night at best, the Versa 2 got me through six full days on a single charge. And that's not vacation days, but trade show days, where my wrist never stopped buzzing with notifications, and then it didn't even get a break overnight because it was tracking my sleep, too. I'll come back to that in a second. For now, let's just give Fitbit props for all work week endurance. Well done. But it was Alan Watts who said that doing things you don't like doing, in order to go on doing things you don't like doing, is stupid. In other words, it doesn't matter if something lasts a long time if you don't enjoy using it. And as a smartwatch, the Versa 2 doesn't address a lot of my complaints from last year. First, you still need to manage an awful lot through the app. Now, I'm talking basic things. If you want to change the watch face, that happens on the phone. And pushing a new one to the Versa 2 takes roughly a decade. I'll leave this real-time footage up to prove my point as I complain about another thing. As a frequent traveler, I like to be able to change the clock manually on the plane when I'm flying through time zones, but you need to do that on the app, which means you need to take your phone out of airplane mode, and you can only change the time zone, not the time. The watch face... Still not done yet, so okay, let's just move on. You get the point. There are other limitations. One, while Alexa is pretty good at the basics like reminders, the voice reply feature when you're sending a message is hit or miss. And thanks to the iPhone's lockdown ecosystem, it only works on Android. Two, as I always say in my Wear OS reviews, watches should force you onto those tiny touchscreens less often, not more. I don't like that Fitbit removed the two additional side buttons from the Versa 1. Whether you're running or just trying to get through life, it's a lot easier to feel out a button than focus on a touchscreen. Three, while I'm glad the interior space is filled up with more battery, it seems weird that something with a fitness focus doesn't have GPS on board. You still need to carry your phone if you want to map your runs. Four, ditto if you want to bring your Spotify playlist along. You can control it from your wrist, but you can't actually put your playlists on there, and you need a premium account to do even that. Yes, you can manually move MP3s over, but that is not fun. And five, there's an always-on display now, great, but using it locks you into just two ugly options and cuts your battery life in half. Finally, let's talk about the two things I think most people will use this for, steps and sleep. For the former, well, it still gives me credit all the time for steps it thinks I'm taking while I'm riding in a car or typing at a keyboard. That feels like too dumb a problem to still be dealing with in 2019. But as Russell Holly points out in an editorial I agree with, it's not unique to Fitbit. That happens to most fitness trackers. 
And with the possible exception of the Apple Watch, Fitbit has the most friendly breakdown of health data out there, with an app that sorts the information so it's accessible, and a huge community of users if the thing that gets you to go to the gym is competing against your friends or strangers. And Fitbit's new premium service only adds to those advantages. As for sleep tracking, well, here's an editorial from Russell Holly I don't agree with. I think sleep tracking is actually pretty useful, as long as you understand that he's right, the data isn't perfect. But being able to break down results over days and weeks and see how the amount of rest you get affects how you feel, it's compelling stuff. I visited my family right after Aoife and my aunt was worried that her guest bed wouldn't be comfortable enough for me to crash on. But according to my sleep score, it was just delightful. The Fitbit Versa 2 is available September 15th for a starting price of $199. It's still not a great smartwatch. So if you're looking for rich messaging and plentiful apps, check out the Apple Watch if you have an iPhone, or the Galaxy Watch from Samsung, or the new Wear OS devices from the Fossil Group. If instead you want a health-focused wearable that does a little more and looks a little better than your typical fitness band, well then the Versa 2 might just be for you. Fitbit owners and wearable wearers in general, I want to hear from you. What are you wearing on your wrist or what do you want to put there? Sound off in the comments below and subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss a bunch of wristwatch reviews coming very soon. And follow me at the same handle on Instagram if you want to see all those new Fossil Group watches announced while I was in Berlin. This review made possible by a Fitbit Versa 2 review sample from Fitbit. I don't take money for reviews, and Fitbit was not offered copy approval. That means they're seeing this video at the same time you are. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.